concluded this week, we're coming towards the uh, latter part of the month of May. It's amazing how quickly time flies. This is Insight to the End Times, as most of you know. I thank you for joining us. Uh, we have been sharing these uh, short podcasts, they're about six minutes long, uh, for, for quite a length of time now. Uh, this is actually episode number six, 360, 360. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, that's a lot of episodes. We're sharing six a week, so we're now in week number 60, I believe it is, and uh, pretty excited about that. Glory to God. We've shared a lot of uh, material, and um, hopefully it's helping you and setting you free a little bit here. As we look at the end of the age and Jesus coming back for the church, we want to be ready for that. We want to be a wise virgin, not one of the foolish ones. Somebody help me out and say amen. We have been studying in 2 Timothy chapter 4, where Paul tells Timothy, the pastor in Ephesus, the church in Ephesus, he says, preach the word in uh, the instant in season and out of season, and also reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. We have looked at the fact that most churches today are not preaching what we call the word. They're preaching or sharing a motivational type feel good message to encourage you, which we are to do, ex exhort, it means in, encourage, but we're also to preach the goodness of the word. And the word means that we have to share verses that have uh, some reproving or correction in them. And we have to share some verses that have rebuking because what you're doing is wrong and you need to quit. You need to end that. It could cost you eternity. Now, these are serious issues. People don't seem to pay much attention to this. But here's what I can't find. I, I can't quite figure out. Here we are preaching a great word that will help set people free and they're not listening because the next verse says they won't endure sound doctrine. Yet as soon as the pandemic hit in March of 2020, three plus years ago, and our government officials who really had very little understanding of what the depth and the degree of everything was going to entail, mandated things immediately. And uh, the population said, yes, sir. Yes, we'll do that. Yes, we will do that immediately. No questions asked. So that doctrine, they, had, they, they accepted immediately. But this doctrine from the word of God, and I don't know, it doesn't make me feel good. I'm not sure. So let's go on with this. In verse three, it says, uh, they will not endure sound doctrine. Endure means you have to receive it. You must receive it. But if you won't endure, that means you reject it. And it says, the reason for that is because of their own lusts. And because of their lusts, they therefore will heap up unto themselves or they will submit themselves to teachers who will please them and, and excite them. And in other words, their ears become itching ears. They want something that will scratch their ear. So they want something that make them feel good. Don't ever correct me. Don't ever uh, uh, tell me I'm wrong. Just, just give me something I like. Uh, if you have humor, we'll, we really like you. We really like you if you have humor. If you'll tell us stories that have a, a funny ending, oh wow, we'll praise the Lord over that. But don't give a sound doctrine. And then the next verse says, they turn their ears away from the truth. And they are turned unto fables. I wanna deal with that today in the time we have left. And if we don't finish, we'll pick it up on Monday. But Paul said, here's, here's really the template for a good minister and for a good uh, setting. You preach the word, you reprove people, you rebuke people, where necessary, you exhort people. But he says there's a time coming when that's not going to work. People won't endure sound doctrine. And we're seeing that disappear. And I don't mean to share anything with you that is disparaging or disrespectful or anything like that. I'm just trying to bring facts to you so you can see where we are on God's timetable. 
And I am informed and aware through very solid sources that there are churches where the Bible is held up. The Bible is held up and they say, we're not gonna use this book anymore. It's not relevant. It's outdated. It doesn't fit our social climate today or our cultural climate today. We don't need this book. What are they gonna use? We've had this happen in our city. We've have heard it and seen the, the actual messages where it was shared in other churches. We've seen churches where they, they say, hey, we wanna enjoy ourselves in church. So uh, bring your coffees and, and, and bring your phone so you can play games on your phone or you can correspond with people or whatever you wanna do. Uh, just come as you are. Well, when you, when you remove sound doctrine, you're leaving the people open to a fable. And so they, they end up with this concept, and I've heard it so many times. I'm not worried. I said the sinner's prayer 22 years ago, and I know when I die, I'm going to heaven because I said the sinner's prayer. I'm a former lawyer. And once a lawyer, always a lawyer. It's inside of you. And I say it from this perspective. I look for evidence, I look for facts. The facts prove what you say you are or what you're doing, the facts prove it. The evidence proves it. And I've said it so many different times. If I was asked to prove that you were a Christian, where would I go to find the evidence of that? Other than the statement that you said the prayer 22 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, it doesn't matter. But where do I find the proof? Where do I find the facts? Where do I find the evidence to prove that you really are what you say you are? And folks, anymore, it's almost impossible to find that proof. Why? They have refused to accept sound doctrine. They've moved away from a church that teaches them and, and, and corrects them and reproves them and rebukes them and preaches the word to them. It, it's amazing. I've been told by church members who have subsequently left our church that we could really grow our church if we just would lighten up on the word and if we would have a coffee break with donuts sometime during the service so we could relax and enjoy some fellowship and shorten the message down to about 20 minutes or so and don't hit so hard. In other words, don't use the Bible. And those people have left because um, how I won't endure their doctrine. Do you know your future and entrance into heaven may be dependent upon what you accept and what you don't accept? And if you're not accepting what Jesus wants you to accept, it could be trouble because the door will be shut and he'll say, uh, I, I never knew you. Now, I didn't get through everything I wanted to, so I guess we're gonna pick this up on Monday. I expect you to have a supernatural weekend, and I'll see you then in Jesus' name. Amen.